in this video we'll be looking at using the coupler tool from Tecla it's the ones on the ribbon here coupler or anchor it's also found in the uh, applications and component if you just type in coupler singular you'll get coupler and coupler splitter we'll just have a look at how those tools work so uh, before I get to that I'll just flick over to my file explorer here. so we've got seven um, TCEPs here which each of them uh, contains a uh, coupler catalog which is um, the BT couplers from Ancon, which consists of the headed anchor, standard couplers, transition, weldable, mechanical couplers, and also we've covered read anchors and read couplers as a standard. So um, once you've installed that, if you go to the um, applications and components menu, and you'll see there'll be a tab now added for you called couplers. And if you expand that, you'll see you've got Ancon and Read. And in the Ancon, you have anchors, mechanical, standard, transition, welded. And under Read, you've got your anchors and your standard. And if you collapse each one of those, you'll obviously see a bit of a bitmap with the component. Now, these components are used within the tool. So these components you can't really use as is. If you use them as is, they basically just insert an item, but they, they're not intelligent. Um, they are used with this tool. So this tool makes that intelligent. So you don't directly use this tool and we'll look at the usage of that, uh, you know, soon. Also, what you'll get is if you get over to the catalogs and the shape catalog, you'll get the same arrangement. You'll get a tab now that says couplers. And if you expand the couplers, you'll get Ancon couplers. And if you click on that, you'll see all the Ancon couplers. And if you click on one of them, it'll actually show you what it looks like. Now, these are the items used by the component and the component is used by the coupler or the anchor tool. Um, they all read the information from a, a CSV file uh, installed in the local uh, Australasia environment. Okay, so with that said, let's just see how this works. Now, for the couplers, there are three ways of inserting couplers. Um, the first being, if you have a rebar set and you've already split the rebar set, you have to select the splitter and we'll see how that works soon. The second method will be if you've got two groups butting up against each other, two uh, rebar groups instead of uh, sets. And the third way is if you don't have a split and you still need to split that. Okay, so I think let's start with the split one first. So if you go to the Customs and Component menu and you type in a coupler, you will be faced with these tools and this one says rebar split and coupler. So if we double click on that, it will open up the properties menu just give it a second to load and then in here if you click this down tab you will get your coupler types which is now installed now say for instance we want to use a, a normal standard uh, Ancon BT type A coupler we can pick that coupler and say split with coupler and then we'll take the answer down the bottom um, select the rebar rebar group or rebar set now in this case I think this is a rebar set so if we click on this rebar set it then asks you the start and end point of the split line now a lot of people actually split the bar or select the bar I like to split the concrete because if you change the bar size and that split line doesn't fully cover the bar it actually doesn't show that bar split so it's a good idea to, to select the outside of the concrete so let's just select the middle there and if we hover over to the other side we can select the middle of the concrete in this part and then what Tecla does, it asks you for the primary bar. So if we just rotate back, we can then select this side of the bar and Tecla will think and put the coupler in for us. So um, it will keep on iterating through that um, until we finish. I'll just quit out of that command. Now let's see what we've got. Um, first of all, we've got a coupler, as you can see there, and also we've got the threading on the rebar. Now, if we click on this rebar and we right click and we say user defined attributes, you'll see under clappers that Tecla doesn't actually show show you anything in the dialog. It's because this dialog can only show the information of one bar at a time. This is a set and the set is split. So there's more than one bar. But however, if you hover over to, and I'll just pull my organizer quickly in here. If you hover over to the organizer and you collapse the um, groups and the uh, combined identical bars, you will then be faced, if I just scroll back here, these are all the bars listed in the set. And if you then look at the the information under the start method, end method, start, start, end, and so forth, Tecla will then list all the information regarding the bar you've just split and added a coupler. So you can see there on the one bar, we've got a coupler. And uh, uh, and uh, we've got a, a standard thread on the other bar. We've also got the thread length on each bar, and we also have the thread type being an M14 by two millimeter pitch on each bar. So it gives you a, a complete information. Now that information is basically the same that if I double click on the coupler, 
and I look at a rebar attribute, it's basically information that is contained in there. Now you can see these are all disabled because it's reading it from the CSV file, which is pre pre set up to the um, catalog. So, but in the event that you do want to change any of those, I mean, I've left the ones enabled that you will generally change, like the name or the class or you know the finish type and so forth. But if you do need to change this, you can just hit this down arrow and say manually enter, and it will enable all the fields for you, and you can change whatever you want. But just bear in mind that if you do that, you are deviating from the standard catalog, and you might. Um, actually break something in not in Tecla but in the ordering process you might be um, ordering non-standard capital so these are all standard so I would suggest stick to the um, auto and then um, what you can do is you could your free text and your uh, free distance you can add extras there and then also uh, with your part name and assembly name couple of name finish you can change all of that the rest is should pretty much stay as is um, Okay, so um, with the second type of split, what we have here is we have a group. Now, this time, instead of using that, I'll go over to this. Now, in, in, in the ribbon, if you're holding your shift key, you hover over the ribbon, you click and leave your mouse over the ribbon. It will also open up the properties. You can then select a different type. In this case, we'll say we want to type B coupler. We can say apply, okay. And then what Tecla asks you at the bottom here again is the primary bar or the rebar set or the splitter. So in this case, we've got the primary bar because these are two loose bars. So we'll click on the primary bar and then it asks for a secondary bar. And as soon as we do that, you can see Tecla inserts the coupler. Now, from these, you can see that this looks different and if i go uh, shift two just to make the uh, component transparent you'll see that we still have the standard coupler but we've got an extended thread on this side and this is really what the bt type b does it it's the same as the a except that you've got uh, uh, additional uh, threaded length the idea is you you screw this whole coupler onto that side you put the two bars together and you screw it back where on the previous type a that is not possible you know you've you've got to screw the coupler onto this bar and then screw this bar into this coupler so uh, there will be situations that you need to figure out which coupler is required for which uh, uh, situation now um lastly um uh, the type that we haven't discussed is when we have a, 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 a rebar set. Now, in the case of a rebar set, you have to select the select for, uh, set first so that you can see the splitter. And once you've done that, you can hit the coupler. And then at the bottom again, it asks your primary bar, rebar set, or splitter. Now, we've got a rebar set, but it's already split. In that case, we have to select the splitter. So if you click, select the splitter, and Tecla then asks you for the primary bar uh, side. And if we click this one, it will then uh, insert the coupler for you. Now, um, these couplers can be changed. So if we double click on the coupler, we can then say, okay, this is not a B, it's a type a C coupler, standard type C. And if we say modify, you can see then Tecla then adds the additional thread, but this time you've got two lock nuts. And let me just say shift four. You've got two lock nuts either side of the coupler to lock it in. So it's pretty much, um, you know, all uh, uh, automated process. Now, the one thing that I do want to say is that these uh, these coupler these uh, couplers are all set up to be automated. So if you click on the bar and we go over to our property tab and we select a different bar size, and I'll make it really obvious this time. I'll make a 32 bar, and I'll say modify. It's smart enough to update the couplers to go with that too. If we now look at the coupler, double click on the coupler. We just get the information. You will see that if we flick over to or we look at the name, you can see it's a BT32C that it's picked up, which is a type C, which is the lock nut type. And if we look at the attributes, you can see the thread length and everything has been updated, even the product code and even the threading. So this is an all automated process. You can also select multiple bars if you if you build yourself a selection filter to only select rebar uh, uh, couplers. You can select all of them and change them in one go. So that pretty much takes care of the uh, standard couplers. So I'll just say uh, entire model and then for this uh, for this um, exercise otherwise uh, actually let's just stick to to uh, one of these uh, uh, just for a minute. If we want to do the anchors, it's the same thing. If I hover over that, holding my shift key, click on it, and just let it load the dialog before I move my mouse away, we'll get this. And in here, we can pick uh, one of the uh, um, uh, um, uh, anchor types here. So if we go BT standard, which is the anchor on, and we say apply, okay. Tecla then asks for the, the select the rebar. So if we select the rebar and then asks for the line across the created. So if I click on the end of that bar, 
up to the end of this bar, Tecla will then insert the anchor for us. Now, just a note here, if I, for instance, say double click, um, change this to a weldable. Now, a weldable coupler needs to be welded to a plate and we'll do that on a different, but if I select, for instance, the read and I say modify, you'll see Tecla will show us a, a, a box. Now, the, the, the issue with this is that you are trying to add a read coupler to a normal bar and that is not possible. If you want to add a read coupler, you need also a read bar. So if we click on the read bar and we hover over to our uh, um, rebar settings, we can then go to, to, to read, read bars. And then if we select a 12 millimeter bar and we say, okay, modify, you see then the component is happy and it actually gives you then a read end. But now this will be broken because yeah, we still have the normal coupler, which is a type A connected to a read bar. And as soon as we go on to this drop down and we change this to a read coupler as well, and we say modify, Tecla then changes this automatically, automatically to the read type coupler. Now the same uh, uh, applies here. As soon as we click on the bar and we select a different bar size, like for instance, the uh, 25 millimeter bar, and we say modify, modify, um, the couplers and the uh, anchors will automatically update to the appropriate couplers uh, required to, to service that um, read bars. Now, that's pretty much the essence of how it works. I would just like to also just show quickly um, how the um, weldable anchors work. So if we hover over the weldable and we say a shift click, and then we say we want to pick the um, weldable anchor, uh, apply OK, we can then say click the set, and then we can pick the end of the bar and also the end of the bar. And then you will see that we get a weldable anchor that actually butts up against the steel plate. This uh, green part is a steel plate. Yeah? And if we go transparent, you can actually see that um, we've got a thread there which, which the coupler turns into or the bar turns into after the coupler has been welded. If we head over to the applications um, and components menu and we just collapse the couplers and we go Ancon and we say uh, welded, you can see from the little bitmap picture here what those look like. It's couplers welded to a plate that the bar just screws into. Um, the last thing I would like to cover is just the uh, situation about the transition anchors. Now, if you look at this, these are this is a rebar group, two different size bars. If we just go over to our uh, menu, we've got a 12 millimeter bar, and that 12 millimeter bar marries with a 16 millimeter bar. Now, if we just go back to the component quickly and we have a look at our transition couplers, we can see we've got a 12 to a 16. We've got a 12 to a 16C, we've got a 16 to a 20, we've got a 20 to a 24, and so forth. Now, the whole idea is you can transition bars with these couplers, provided that these diameters exist. If you pick a diameter combination that's not in here, you will get the red box that it's Tecla's way of saying you are doing something illogical. Now, in this case, Tecla will also pick up uh, automatically which sizes you've picked, and it will try and marry it as, uh, you know, uh, accurately. Otherwise, it will show you that. So what we can do now is hover over to the um, ribbon menu. We can hold in shift, click on the coupler, and this time we'll configure it to give us a transition type A coupler. We can say apply, okay, and then Tecla asks for the primary bar, which is this one, and then asks for the secondary bar. And if we click that one, uh, you can see Tecla will give us the a transition bar, a transition coupler perfectly because it could marry the 16 with the 12, which is. Um, I beg your pardon. Yeah, it's a 16 with a 12, which is this one, 1216. Now, in the event that we change, let's say, for instance, we want to go from a 20 to a 24, we can then take this one, which is the primary one. We can then make that a 24. Okay, modify, and immediately you see it breaks because Tecla uh, doesn't acknowledge a 24 to a 12. But as soon as we click on this one and we change this to a 20 bar, there is a 24 to a 20 and we say modify, then Tecla is happy again and it will give you the coupler. Now, the other thing to, to also uh, bear in mind is that these two bars being different diameters might uh, not always be in the same, um, uh, how can I say, center to center, especially when it comes to to um, a bar set. So this is a single bar set and you can see it's split there. Tecla then um, 
puts that bar with minimum cover at the bottom so it sort of offsets the two now you can still do a transition anchor so if i just go a coupler and i'll pick um, and you see in this case i can't pick a primary bar because well you can try and pick it but the detector will say uh, two points it will give you a logical result so you need to click the bar so that the splitter comes up and then when you're working with sets and then click click, uh, click the, the coupler click the splitter and what will happen is identify the primary bar we click this one and Tecla will split it now this splitter will work and you you'll see from this that it's um it's a bit off center and the coupler is also a bit off center it will allow you to do this provided that the centers are within a five millimeter tolerance um, out of plane otherwise it will show a break a broken coupler so this visually doesn't look so good but unfortunately at this this point in time i have not found a way to align in rebar